Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Difference Maker Podcast. Your hosts, Matt and Chris Calderoni. It has been a little bit. Um, we've had to take some time to kind of just really get the work done that we've had on on a scaling side with the company, which has been great. Uh, but most importantly, I think what we're excited about is really making sure that you know we 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 sat down and asked ourselves like, okay. What are the best ways we can kind of keep creating these episodes and you know helping high performers and so on? And what we're actually going to be doing is starting in December, we're going to have a four week period where we bring you all the exact steps you need to take in order to really set yourself up for a good new year. I feel like a lot of people kind of half and half talk about that. But this whole time, even though we've been doing work and such has been great, kind of just to collect ourselves, really get some direction going forwards and start with our new series that we're going to be starting today, which is things athletes struggle to talk about, or this really could be high performers struggling to talk about. Um, it's an important one. So we're excited to kind of dive into it. Yeah. And the topic today, like I think what you said, it was about all about injury. Everyone's had injury. It's just a normal thing. It's a normal part of the process. It sucks when it happens, um, but it's not the be all and end all, yeah. you know? So, and I think that's very important for people to understand. Even if it's like a massive injury that you've had, there's ways back from it. It's just, it's part of the, you know, part of the business that you chose, yeah. right? So let's dive into it. So today's topic, the first kind of side of things that athletes struggle to talk about is coming back from an injury and maintaining the spot that you have, maintaining that position you had before injury, right? Like this is a real thing and we get it. You know, you sometimes start to feel helpless when you get injured, anxious, left out, insecure. It's normal, right? Because really all you want to do is become this difference maker who's able to come back better than before. But the truth is you need to understand how to properly go through this injury process because the reality is that most people don't teach you how to mentally come back from an injury. Most people don't te- don't don't want to talk about what to do during that process and how to kind of rebuild that identity because that's what really we're going to be talking about here today. So as we go through this simple three-step blueprint, you're going to see today it's very easy for a return to play. It's just simply understanding your grief cycle. It's then going through and innovating yourself. And finally, it's rebuilding your certainty. And we're going to give you step-by-steps for that on exactly what you need to do. And I don't even think it's, well, like, Going off your point, I don't even think it's coming back from it. Like, depending on what the injury is sometimes and how long you're out for, like, I think you got to take the uh, an approach to it where you're you're coming back almost as a new player. Yeah. Like, you're not trying to get back to where you necessarily were because maybe, you know, things change, uh, things happen to you, <clears throat> your, your body where you're not able to do those same things anymore, which is, it's fine. But, like, adapting and becoming that new player, Yeah. it's... I think that's one of the major approaches that people need to take. Like I have an example that maybe I'll go into a little bit later, but that's one of the most difficult things I think that people need to wrap their head around is you're not going to come back as the same player as you were. And you don't want to. No. Right? Like I think this is before we get into the grief cycle part, even with the whole side behind the mindset of what it means to come back from an injury because we're going to link, well, we have linked, I should say, down below a white paper case study we've actually used with one of our NFL players that you can see the exact step-by-step process we use. So please download that. Just make sure you go through and, and fill out the form. Um, but this is this is really where we talk about it a lot, where it's like coming back from an injury shouldn't be just, like Chris said, coming back from an injury. It's a reinvention process. It's actually a time, whether or not you want to admit it, a forced time to slow down and evaluate things and ask yourself, am I really doing this at a level that I want to do it at? Like, am I really doing this the right way? And if you are, great ask yourself how can i come back stronger than before if you aren't no problem ask yourself how can i come back reinvented better than i was before right right and and sorry but going forward just so everybody knows we're not trying to downplay any injury that anyone's had like everyone has their own experience with how they go through injury and um obviously you know i've been injured you've been injured people like i've per like the biggest thing for me I've never torn an ACL. I've never done anything like that. So I've never had to come back after six months or anything like that. I've had concussions. I've had high ankle sprains. I've had uh, a broken bone, but nothing like, yeah, nothing that's crazy, crazy. And not, well, to go on Chris's point, not to downplay injuries, but to kind of just bring up the uncomfortable topic about it. Yeah. It's more uncomfortable than anything. It is. And it's, it is a spot where people do, unfortunately, like to mask insecurities, Mm. right? With an injury. And that's, Again, I'm not taking anything away from it, but here's what I know from our experience with some athletes. A lot of times it's like, well, this is why I wasn't performing the way I wanted to and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but the truth of the matter is when it comes down to getting injured and and 
innovating when you're in an injury and so on is that there's a major opportunity for you like the high performers at the top levels we work with injuries are an opportunity yeah if you look at it that way right yeah. injuries are an opportunity to really sit back and yes i understand it could be a year process sometimes i get it listen I have worked with athletes that have gone through the year-long process and have come back stronger than they have before. I have worked with athletes who have torn a pec before the start of their NFL season two weeks before and came back and have now become a starter on a team making multi, multi, multi millions of dollars. My point is, though, it's the mentality you decide to take coming into this process. And you got to realize injuries are not a crutch. It doesn't matter if it's six months. You can do a lot in six months. It doesn't matter if it's it's 12 months. You can do a lot. It doesn't matter if it's three weeks. You can still do a lot during this process. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that everybody needs to understand, because if you realistically you're going through this by yourself, yep. it's it really plays on you. It's like injuries always happen at the most <laughs> unfortunate times Absolutely. you could be flying in a season you could be doing everything right you're feeling good on the field you're feeling good off the field and then all of a sudden bang yeah there goes your ankle there goes whatever and it's at the most inopportune times exactly so like when it things like that really sneak up on you and catch you off guard like that how are you yeah. If you don't have help, how are you supposed to go through it? You listen, yeah. oh, you know, you'll come back. Coaches, don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, but even like, even the crap about feel bads. Like, I'm sorry, but listen, if you're somebody, and this is why we're going to go through this three-step process right now. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who's in the feel bad moment longer than, look, the injuries happened. It's done. The moment that you start grabbing onto things and holding onto the past and why me why me that's the crap that absolutely kills your future going forwards right that's the stuff that holds you back that's the stuff that mentality of oh i'm injured and that's that that is the enemy you're fighting against here and if you are somebody that's injured we're going to teach you how to get through that right now because the last thing you need to get into is a state of learned helplessness or this state of overthinking or this state of poor me you don't need that. You need to come from a state of power right now so that you can move forwards. And that's what we do with all our athletes. So step number one, you need to understand your grief, okay? So let's talk about this. And if you Google grief cycle and you just click on images, you will see what I'm talking about right now. You can actually follow along with me. There are five major stages to this grief cycle, the, the Kubler-Ross grief cycle that I'm not a fan of where it ends. And we'll talk about that in a second, but we have to understand the grief cycle first. So here's what happens when you get an injury. First, there's denial, right? That's step number one. Denial is when you're going through that avoidance, the confusion part, the part where it's like, oh my gosh, there's a shock. How did I get injured? How was this me? How did this happen? Then there's an anger part. And the anger part is where it's like, oh my gosh, I just got my, my, my diagnosis and I understand now how long I'm going to be out for six weeks. Oh my gosh, six weeks is so long. You're frustrated, you get angry, you get anxious, you get inflated, you get into a spot where you're irritated by things. But then the lowest, lowest, lowest point, which we need to talk about right now, is the bargaining phase. Bargaining phase is when you struggle to find meaning behind things. You start to get into that mindset of, oh my gosh, it's six months, I've got so much time now, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you start to shape and frame this thing in your head that you're never going to be back and be the same and it's never going to be good again and i've got such a long road this bargaining phase is the most dangerous in the injury cycle if you want to call it that because injury cycle lines up literally with the grief cycle because this is where you start bargaining with your habits when you lose purpose you don't keep doing the things like waking up on time right. you don't do the things like eating right you don't do the things like shutting off the phones half an hour before bed you start bargaining like it says and this is super dangerous because this is where we notice a lot of athletes start to fall into that state and push themselves way back further well i personally i did that yeah i did i did that when i had my um when i went through my high, high ankle sprain after that it was terrible there was scar tissue i lost a lot of mobility in it and i was just like well <laughs> i'm just playing on one leg now yeah and, and it wasn't until like a few years after where you you found ways and how to break it down and stuff like that which was good eventually but like at the beginning it was just well i guess i'm just gonna i'm in have one thing now and you find ways around it but it's like you accept it when there are ways in how you can do it it's just that little bit of extra once you because i personally i believe everyone needs to go through like not the feel bad, but like the down in the dumps right at mm -hmm. the beginning. I think you need to be able to have that, those couple days where it's like, shit. Yeah. You know? like and it is going to be, it can be a couple days. Yeah. And it can be. And I think like 
once that happens and you get that out and you have that experience, then it's like, okay, I've, I've felt like this now what are my solutions going forward and i think that's the kickstarter that people need a lot of help with well if you look at it so if you look on this grief cycle too the first two steps denial and anger is when you need the most information that you can gather in communication with others why because during the denial and anger you're going to help have somebody that can help you through that process right in the bargaining phase though is where you need the most emotional support Mm -hmm. and here's the other thing too we're not going to neglect this for athletes but You might be somebody that has a misdiagnosed injury and you go through multiple times this grief cycle. That's okay. You're going to follow these steps that we talk about. But the first step, like we said, you got to understand this grief cycle because you need to fight against this. You need to fight against this. Listen to me. If you're somebody right now who is injured and you're going through it, I am begging you, listen to our steps, fight through this. You're going to be fine, but you need to realize it's all about how you decide to take control. Okay. So the last two steps, then there's a depression step. The depression step comes right after bargaining. When you throw away that purpose, you throw away your habits and everything starts to crumble. You start to get depressed, right? Overwhelmed, helpless, helpless. You start to get hostile. You start to get a little bit, you know, annoyed with what's going on around you. You you get into this state of, well, I can try anything, but it won't work. And you start living in the past. And then once you do, this is where I, again, I don't really fully agree with this cycle because you're going to see there's one last step we actually add on to it. Then there's, there's acceptance. It's like, well you know what, now I've gone through it, I'm going to explore my options, this is where I'm at, and let's go from there. I don't like that it ends at acceptance. I'm going to be brutally honest with that. Why? Because I can't have you right now just accept you got injured. You can understand you got injured, but the step that we always say at Molotium that's the most important, and it's going to lead into step two, is you need to go through, once you go through these five steps, the sixth step is creation now. You got to look at it and say, I've been injured, what am I going to do moving forward, though? What am I creating? Where am I going? Who am I going to be when I come back from this? What, am I going to ha- what type of impact am I going to have? What's my purpose? Where am I going? How am I going to do it? We often just get to this point where it's like, oh, I'm just going to see until the end of my recovery process. And I get that. I get a lot of people like to you know, use this sometimes of, of an excuse, I'll say, sometimes an excuse of, I just need to get through the injury process. It's like, no, no, no. That's the worst way to go through it. Because then you just start going through the motions. Instead, it has to be, this is who I'm creating. We were just, we were just referred an athlete, actually, from one of our, our um, NFL players who's going through a, a knee rehab. And this individual has been going through it now for about six months. And he's finally on his way out. And he goes, um, Matt, the toughest thing for me is I kind of just accepted I'm going through this cycle. And I need somebody to help me. And this is where it says in the grief cycle that you need some guidance. But I need somebody to help me kind of reinvent who I'm going to be. And it's like, yes, man, this is exactly what we're talking about. And we've been doing the work and not to say anything for it, but there's a drastic change in how he's approached things. There's a purpose behind waking up. There's an understanding of what he wants to create. There's now not just going through the rehab process, but there's a reason that every single rep matters. And this is how it works. Like, Listen, if you've got to this point and you've gained maybe a little bit more weight than you wanted to during the injury process, maybe you're not waking up on time, maybe you're not falling asleep on time, whatever it might be, and you're bargaining a lot and you're depressed and you're living in the past and you're wondering why me, I'm, I'm going to be that calm voice for you right now to tell you it's going to be okay. You just have to realize that you need to follow through with this. Yeah, and going through it, like I think that's, again, one of the tougher things is just the actual going through a process and the actual reinvention and stuff like that. Like if you don't have that consistent, um, not reassurance, but like you're building something today. Yes. Like you're building something new. That's something to get excited about as opposed to, you know, just I'm trying to come back from something. Yeah. Because when you're trying to come back from something, it always feels like you're, you're climbing up a mountain and then yeah. your hand slips at something because, you know, you're not just there yet. Your your shoulder isn't that strong enough. And it's like, ah you know, maybe another week and it's, you hear all the things from the doctors and your coaches and teammates. Oh yeah. Don't worry. Like it'll it'll come back and stuff like that. Just one thing to say on that one. If you are going through an injury, kind of like Chris just mentioned, one of the most toxic things you can start doing is listening to everybody around you. Yeah. It's, it's tough, but like you want to, because you want to hear the person that's going to give you that that hope and that answer because you're you're a competitive athlete you're a high performer and you want to get back on the field the ice as quickly as you can yeah right so it's almost like you're just grasping at who can give me that hope when it's like forget the hope man just go through day by day build something new and that's something exciting to to like get excited about 
So yeah. without further ado, so now that you understand the grief cycle to what Chris was saying to and transitioning into it, step two now, you got to get into creation mode. So creation mode is going to take about four, five, six things you need to do right here. Okay. Number one, you need to get back to your purpose. So if you're going through an injury right now, I want you to pause this episode, go get a journal or piece of paper, or whatever. And you're going to go through this exercise with me right now. We're going to, we're literally going to transform on the spot. Your purpose, you need to ask yourself, why did I originally start? And you need to write that all down. And I need, I need you to be a kid again. I need you to remember why you started this sport. I need you to remember who you wanted to help because of it. If your drive was because you wanted to, to help a family member out of a tough situation, totally understand that. If your drive was because you were like me as a kid and it was always your lifelong dream to get to another country and play a sport, write that down again. But why did you originally start? Forget about the noise right now. Maybe you are an athlete getting paid money to do what you need to do right now, or maybe you're not. My point is though, go back to when you weren't. Go back to that spot that you can remember why you originally started this all and write everything down that you can remember. Listen, everybody thinks you only have one why. That's the biggest load of bullshit that you've ever been told. You're going to have multiple reasons as to why you started. And I need you to write them all down right now. I'm going to ask you to get vulnerable. I'm going to ask you to get uncomfortable. Listen, if it was for money, I'm cool with you telling me that it was about money, but tell me how it's going to help other people. Tell me why you wanted the money. Get emotional behind the money. If you, if it's because you wanted to be one of the best, why did you want to be one of the best? Is it because you were never one of the best growing up as a kid? Tell me about that. But you need to have an honest conversation with yourself right now because getting back to it and getting yourself and pulling yourself out of that bargaining stage is reminding yourself why you did what you did again. Get back to that. Multiple reasons. Do you have anything to add to that? No, I was going to say, uh, this is a great exercise just for um, not relying on anybody else to give you that motivation or inspiration, but the reason why you're doing what you're doing, like that, that comes from you. And it's a unique experience that only you have, right? So it's... It's a, again, great exercise going through an injury or not, and you haven't done this in a while and you're relying on all these other people to get motivated and stuff. I would truly ask yourself, like, why are you doing what you're doing again? And just remind yourself. Yeah. And again, why did you start is the key. Why did you start? Why did you originally get to this point? Why did you originally decide to lace up your boots, to put on skates, to grab whatever it is? Why did you start that? Was it because that was the best memory you had with your older brother like it was for me and then it developed into more? Tell me all about that. Tell me all about your current whys, your past whys, your present whys, your future whys. Tell me every single thing. Why do you want this? Okay, so write that down. Secondly, and we're going to talk about after when we get to habits, which is part of this step, how to review this every day. But secondly, you then need to ask yourself, who do I want to be when I return? What kind of impact do I want to have? What ability do I want to be able to create within myself right now so that when I return, I'm coming back better? Who do I want to be? That's the most important question you can answer next. Who do I want to be? And I want you to do me a favor right now. Remove any kind of limiting beliefs or bullshit that's holding you back in your mind and really dream. Who do you want to be? Do you want to, be, do you want to come back and become a, a starter for your team? Listen, You'll see in the white paper when we were working with that athlete in the NFL who tore his, his pec two weeks before the season, we asked him a very simple question. Who do you want to be when you return? He goes, Matt, I'm currently a depth player on the team. I want to become a starter by the end of the year. He became it. He took the position and now he's crushing it in the NFL. And it's like it all started with a vision in one of his lowest times. Two weeks before the season, man. Think about that. That's not, that's not an easy pill to swallow. Yeah, that's wild. That's a shock, right? You, you tear your peck. That's a shock. But getting back to the purpose and then asking yourself, who do I want to be when I return? That's the most important question you can ask yourself. You want to become a, a top goal scorer? Tell me about that. You want to become somebody that can change your team environment? Tell me about that. Multiple things, though. This is going to be a nice long list. Take about five minutes to do that right now. And breaking that add? down is like, like just to the base thing of it, it gets you excited again gets you excited and it gets you wanting to build towards that as simple as it it seems like at the end of the day that's what it does it's like yeah it's like almost getting that it, it it's that anticipation of getting that christmas gift that you know that you got yeah and it's like now you just got to wait for that day yeah and it's true right it's like this is to chris's point this is the creation now this is what we're going to be creating because in the next step we'll teach you about how to build certainty but you need to realize right now, you need to know where the heck you even want to go again. 
stop thinking this is just returning from injury. You got to ask yourself, how do I come back better? Who do I want to be? Okay, so now that you got the identity down, the next part, you need to evaluate your belief systems. Listen, I get it. I've been through it. Chris has been through it. We work on our on this with our athletes. When you get injured, you develop often negative belief systems. Yeah, belief my, systems that hold you back. Yeah, Go my on. ankle that's not going to hold up. My, you know, I'm not going to have that shot again. This is this is just. Well, let's go even deeper. Part of Did I now. lose my spot? Yeah. Am I ever going to come back the same? Listen, that's that's crap. That's noise, man. You got to cancel that out. Belief systems are going to guide your behaviors. That's how this works. And if your belief systems and you haven't evaluated them since you've been injured are not empowering you, you need to change them right now. So here's how you're going to do it. You got to ask yourself, what is the current story I'm telling myself right now? Am I telling myself, I don't know if I can come back better? Are you telling yourself, I don't know if I can be that person that, that, that's able to, to steal a spot back? What are the beliefs? And maybe you're saying, I don't know if I'm even going to recover from this injury. Get rid of that. Take the time right now. Sometimes getting rid of limiting beliefs are just taking the time to get extremely un- conscious of what your belief systems even are because we often develop these without even knowing it, right? They're given to us by the environment a lot of the times. They're given to us by other people. But right now, I'm telling you as your coach, you need to realize that all of those beliefs are BS. Yeah. Let, that- me, let me dismantle some of them right now. So if you're somebody who's worrying about coming back, can I come back better than I did before? I don't know if I can do it. Well... Who was in control before that of becoming the person you were? You were. So you can do it. So belief is gone. Yeah, you're going through a little bit of a rough patch, but you know what? Head up. You got it. If you're somebody that's worrying about, oh my gosh, they brought a new player in. Does that mean I'm replaced? No, you're not. That means you're injured. And currently, you're not in the lineup. Can you get back into it? Yep. How do you do it? Through hard work. We're going to teach you that in step three. Easy. But you don't need to start worrying about, will I come back better? You're in full control of that. You are in full. I think this is what an injury does, though, too. And this is probably a dangerous part when it comes to belief systems. Sometimes it sucks away your control or your 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 understanding if you have control. Yeah. No. Well, perception. That's what I'm looking for. One of the biggest things that I think is most difficult with injuries is the fact that you can prepare, you can do everything right, and it'll happen. It things just go. Yep. You know, and that that's. That's the part that I think, again, people struggle with the most, and it's a pain, but I think there has to be a point of realization that this this is the business you chose, Yep. and, and things like this do happen, but I mean, it's tough to do, but the biggest thing is, if, if you're someone like me, who when you're taking a look at limiting beliefs and you have to go through, um, you, you don't know where to necessarily start, start with your own history. Mm -hmm. Like there's plenty of tidbits in there showing that, like Matt said, you've made these decisions to come to this point that you can not only do it again, but you can do it better now with the experience that you have. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest misconceptions too, is that we're not in control of our lives when the truth is you're in full control. Mm -hmm. I know you can't control outcomes, but you're in control of the actions you take. Listen, returning and becoming one of the best players possible, that is fully in your control. Yeah, it's just, you know what? I think the one part is everyone's done rehab for something and it's the worst part yeah. of, of any training it's true. program. It's, not fun. it's just it's, it's just not a fun. grind through it and it is what it is. Um, coming into that too, now if you are somebody, let's talk about the uncomfortable part who is depressed and going through a depressional period because I do not need you labeling yourself as I am a depressed person. You're going through a depressional period, which means a point that you're lower, you're not as happy, you're not as excited. That's fine. You need to realize that the way to get out of that, though, is to truly understand what happened in the past happened and all success truly cares about in any area of life. And I'm going to make you believe this in a sec. All success cares about is your future. Why is it that we've been able to see then if you're think about this, if you are a depressed person and going through it, let me let me challenge you here. If you really are so screwed because of the past now and how things happened, why is it that people who come from tough backgrounds can build multi-billion dollar companies? Why is it that athletes who had nothing can become something? Why is it that then if you're not able to, to, to move forwards, why is it that, that people notoriously throughout history have been able to create something even though their, their upbringing wasn't the greatest because they made a choice? They're in control because success only cares about what you do in the future. That's the truth. Success only cares about what you decide to create in the future. It doesn't care that you went through a tough time. It doesn't care that you made a wrong in the past. 
Success cares about what you do moving forwards. And if you're someone who's living in the past, I need you to realize and wake up right now. And I'm going to give you that wake up call. You need to realize that it's time to stop worrying about the past and it's time to get focused on what you want to create. If you can't get out of bed right now because you're going through that depression, listen to this podcast episode over and over and over again until you get out of it. If that's all you can do right now, start listening to this. But I need you to start moving forwards in some way, shape, or form. If you are sitting around right now and you say, okay, Matt, I can't really do that right now. First off, I'm going to say that's BS because you totally can. But secondly, I'm going to say, fine, then what can you do while you're sitting around? You can eat great. You can go to sleep on time. You can wake up at the right times. You can stop watching feel bad movies about things on YouTube. You can start focusing on the right things. That's a step. I feel like so many people don't realize that just changing your focus is a good step. Well, yeah. And and it doesn't have to be a massive no. step that you take, but um, it's it's just starting. And if you can just start, you will continue to move forward. Yeah, but it, here's... Sorry, just one thing on that, because that's that's a little bit of a statement that I want to clear up. Chris said, just start. Yes, he's right. But you need to do something... You just need 1% more each day. So if you started the day before, it's not good enough just to start again. Yeah. I'm going to hold you accountable to that right now. Your next step has to be starting and then taking another step. So that next step might be eating healthy. Okay, great. Or maybe it's just breakfast. You're starting to eat healthy. No problem. The next day then, I need you to start. I need you to eat a healthy breakfast and I need you to eat a healthy lunch. The next day, I need you to eat a healthy breakfast, healthy lunch, healthy dinner. The next day, I need you to eat a healthy lunch, uh, healthy breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Then the next day, I need you to... You see how this stacks, right? Because then it's like, then I need to start going to bed on time. Then I need to start waking up on time. Now, by the end of the week, if you truly take one step each day, you've already completely uplifted your entire habit system. Right. Think about that. So let's pretend you start on a Monday and all you start with is thinking better. Okay, great. That's your Monday. Tuesday is eating a healthy breakfast. Great. Wednesday, it's now eating a healthy breakfast and lunch. Thursday, it's now eating three great meals. Friday, you're eating great snacks. Saturday, you're going to bed on time. Sunday, you're waking up on time. Right away, you just changed your life in a week. And you can do that. And it is that simple. I hate when people say it's not that simple. It's all about beliefs. Now, once you're done with the beliefs that we've just spoken about here, you've got to create habits for yourself. So here's how simple the habits are. We're not going to spend a long time on this. Habits are very easy to go through. Okay. You need to have what's called an implementation intention. An implementation intention is this. You need to have an activity you're going to perform, a time you're going to perform it at, and a location you're going to perform it. So that could mean waking up at you know, waking up is the activity. The time is going to be 7 a.m. and the location is going to be in your bed. Now, why is that important? The reason I say in your bed is because a lot of people will fall asleep on the couch and then they'll wake up one place and go to sleep another and it becomes a mess. You need to have that implementation intention in place. Do this for everything and anything. This can be for rehab work you need to do. This can be for breakfast you need to eat. This can be for dinner you need to eat, lunch, whatever it is. Have an implementation intention in place. When you have an activity or the habit, a time and a, lo- and a location, that has been scientifically research-backed and proven to be the thing that can help you maintain those tab- th- those habits. And that's how it's been going. Okay, so once you get your habits down, the last part, you need to set 30-day targets. Don't go any further than that. Here's why. During the rehab process, your recovery is going to be drastic when it comes to changes, right? Things can change very quick. Sometimes timelines have to be lengthened, unfortunately. Sometimes they're shortened. So trying to go and set you know, year-long targets right now or whatever doesn't serve your current situation. 30 days at a time, month to month. That's all we need to take it. And it's it's super simple, but man, is it effective. Yeah. So here are the three things you need to set your 30-day targets in. Number one, strength. What's the target for your strength by the end of these 30 days? Is it to just go a little bit deeper on a squat? That's cool. But what's your target? Number two, what's a conditioning target you can go through? And number three, what's a skill target you can go through? Now, these three things you need to go over with the individual who's helping you get through your rehab right now. You need to go through this with the physiotherapist. You need to go through this with the strength coach or whoever it might be, the reconditioning coach. My point is, though, you need to set these targets with these individuals, right? Now, the last one that you need to set in these 30-day targets is a mental target, a mental and emotional one. This could be as simple as following through on your habits. That's a great one to start with. This could be as simple as, you know, not focusing on the past anymore and focusing only on the future. That's a simple one. 
But you need just simple mental targets. This could be that you want to practice meditation each morning for 10 minutes. That's a simple target. But you don't need to do anything complex. You just need to build habits. That's how you reinvent yourself. And the way you're going to set these targets is very simple. That vision you set, that identity that you put, simply simply to answer this, you need to align these 30-day targets with that person you want to become. Yeah, and I think this is where at the beginning of, of the podcast we were talking about um, realizing that you have time to, now that if you have some time that you're not necessarily training all the time, but you have time now to work on other parts of your mm-hmm. game or, or personal side of life that you didn't have before. So turning turning an injury into a positive because now you can work on this other stuff, like you have the time now. And I think that's something that everyone can kind of take from it where like instead of before, it's just, oh, I got to sit down and do nothing and recover and, and just wait. Now you actually have the time to actually attack things that you've wanted to attack before. Yep. Now, now that you've reinvented yourself, you've created, let's talk about the last part, which is certainty, building your certainty back. So how do you do this? Well, we're going to keep falling back on the four things we always do. You need mental reps, you need physical reps, you need film, and you need a laser focus. Let's talk about each of these quick. For mental reps, you need to do at least a form of visualization three times a week. Visualize going through those skills. Visualize yourself reconditioning. Visualize yourself getting strong again right? 10 on each. That's all you need to do. Visualize yourself being stronger in the gym. I know that sounds stupid, but trust me, this is something we've been doing. And if you download that white paper down below, you will see we did this with our NFL player. We were having him visualize movements he was doing in the gym, visualizing movements he was going to do when he came back, visualizing those things. Why? So that when he got there, he already had the neuro associations in his nervous system. The next thing you need to do is physical practice. Now, this physical practice is probably going to be completed with the individual that you're working with on your rehab, but the physical practice is another form of getting this done, right? Next part, you need to watch some film, study, 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 study. If you're returning to a certain sport, watch more sports. That's only going to do you good. You're going to learn more about the game. And then finally, you need to have a laser focus, which in this case is what your targets are going to do for you. Anything to add? No, I was going to say, like, again, injuries come, they go, it is what it is. But it's all the actions that you do in, in the time that, you know, you've gotten that injury to when you get out of it. Like you can speed it up or you can slow down the process. Yep. That's one of the bigger things that I think, um, like, obviously, we want to get back as quickly as possible from from being injured, being hurt or whatever it is. But like, listen to your doctors, listen to the people that are telling you, you know, do this, get this much sleep, eat this, all that stuff. Like, do everything. It's just like building a skill, like you're building a new skill. Like you got to take the same approach and you got to be, you got to be diligent with it daily. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest one too, that Chris just hit on is like a lot of times during an injury, it's easy to bug out. It's easy to do what you need to, but this is when you need to, this is why we established purpose right at the start again, right? You need to go back to that. You want to help mom. You want to help dad. You want to help whomever it might be, you want to prove that coach wrong, you want to come back better than you ever have, you want to, like, go back to that why you started. And realistically, like, in, you, when you get injured, your work just started, man. Yep. Like, it, everything has a purpose. When you're injured, everything that you do has a purpose in, in order for you to get better. Like, that, taking that extra amount of rest, that extra amount of sleep, like, as, as weird as that sounds, like, that has a purpose. Like, eating the proper things, that has a purpose. Doing yeah. those those stupid shoulder movements if you if you gotta ever get mobility like it's that has it. a purpose yep. so like if if you're able to do that and understand that every little thing that like you're gonna come back not only healthier but like better than before and and you'll have that new belief that it's like you know what i can work through injuries yeah i can and work to- through this. and just to say like you totally totally can yeah completely and it's Look, I, this is the last thing we'll say. You, if you're going through it right now, we understand. Yeah. We get it. It sucks. But what you need to realize is that you have an amazing opportunity here to recreate yourself to become someone better than you want to be. Yeah. And don't compare your timeline to anybody else's. Yep. Like, don't compare your injuries. There's no injury too big or no injury too small. It all has an effect on, on everybody and in different ways. So, like, it's... Every injury is something that you got to take care of and every injury is or anything is something that you got to put work into to come out 
that much better. So Absolutely. there's no, again, there's no comparison to ACL, to ankle roll, to whatever. It's you're going through it. It's ultimately we're all in a sucky situation when we yeah. go through an injury. Embrace it and go through it. Yeah. So listen, if you are going through something right now, at the very, very minimum, download the white paper below. It's going to detail everything that you need. It's going to give you everything. Now, if you're struggling or you want an extra kick in the ass, you want to get some mental programming down, take on a free consultation call with us. It's down below as well. All you need to do is click the link, sign up. You'll speak with Chris or myself, and we'll help you through. We had a couple athletes actually last week who signed up for some on a different side of things from one of our past episodes. And it's like they're in a program, they're doing their thing now, and they're enjoying it. But most importantly, they're getting results. Yeah. And if you're somebody who's going through it right now and you don't know how to kind of handle it or do it or whatever it might be, we're here. We're going to help you. But you need to take action. And if you guys like this stuff that we talk about and everything, we have a newsletter. It's called the Model Team Insider. You guys can find it. There's going to be a link below. There's also on our website if you want to check that out. But it's a free newsletter. Uh, that will you train need, you weekly. Yeah. All you need is an email. Um, and and you can get little little things like this in between our podcasts and stuff like that. So Things to actually, which by the way, we know that you probably have a lot of different email subscriptions yes. and all that. We made a promise when Chris and I started this to say we will only give you the most important things that you need. Yeah. We are no BS. We're, we're here to get you results. Yeah. And like, again, it's free. Um, if and it's a place for you guys to ask us questions like yes. if if you want us to cover a certain topic on a future yeah, podcast or anything that's like a that. big one too even on tiktok like look this is something we posted on tiktok a couple weeks ago and it it kind of took off really really well and we figured let's do an episode on it yeah so from now until december we're literally doing that because once december hits we're going to go through a whole rewire your mindset program which is going to be awesome to set you up for the new year the right way but Right now, we're covering the most things that athletes struggle with. And this was one that we felt was big. We hope you got a lot out of it. Listen back to this again. Go through it again. Hit us with questions, social pages, whatever it is. We will answer them. And we'll see you all in the next one. Stay resilient.